All right, what I'm going to do is three videos because there's three things that go into welding procedures. Uh, the first video will be on a welding procedure specification or a WPS. The second video will be on a procedure qualification record. And the third will be a welder qualification test record. These are all things that are associated with getting certified in welding. Uh, the first, the WPS, is basically a proposition for a process that needs to be proven good. The procedure qualification record is what you do to prove that the WPS is good. And then the welder qualification test records are uh, when you certify the welders to the PQR, they become a certified welder. So there'll be three videos, one on WPS, one on PQR, and one on the WQTR. This being the first video, a three video series on welder certification. The first one is going to be on welding procedure specifications. Like I said before, it's like a proposition for a process that's going to be used at a company. This is all uh, hypothetical, so there's not a real company here. But the first thing you're going to do on, when you write a WPS is go into your general info. It's going to ask you your company name. Um, so we're just going to make it up and say that it's um, company A. Authorized by, it's going to be some kind of uh, foreman or manager or owner or something along them lines. So we're just going to say by some kind of boss. The date, December 9th, 2014. Revision, I always start with 00, zero and if you do a revision it goes to 0, 01, zero 02 consecutively. It's going to be the same date. By, and that would be your CWI, Certified Welding Inspector, which would be me. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to do a, uh, a stick weld and um, we're going to do a pretend stick weld, so it's going to be... Uh, the only process we're going to do here is SMAW, and you never leave any of these blank. They always have to have um, something in them. So if there's, otherwise it leaves a doubt in the mind of whoever's reading it. Was that left out or was it purposely left blank? So I always put NA not applicable. That's if you had a pre-qualified junk joint. Supporting PQR numbers, there shouldn't be any if you're just starting out, so all those are going to be NA. So once you do one, you just copy and paste it. PQR, how to write that, is going to be the next video I do. It's the normal sequence you would go into if you were doing this. It's a manual process. Your base uh, metal specs, we're just going to assume they're going to be using an A36 steel. It's very common. We don't really have a type of grade. And we're going to go with a uh, vertical up, like I said. Uh, we'll just say it's a uh, 3 8 groove thickness. Point three. Seven five two a another point three seven five that's going to be in inches fillets there is none so again you're going to do your NAs diameter pipe we're not doing pipe so it's going to be NAs again. Specification, I believe, is uh, A5.9. That's the only one we're using, so we're going to add A. AWS classification, we're going to say this is uh, ER7018. It's 
the only one we're going to use in our theory process here. Flux, that's for uh, submerged arc. Gas for MIG, so we don't care about that. Composition of the gas. Flow rate, again, we don't care. Gas cup size, we don't care. Post weld heat treatment, we're not going to do any of that. That's sometimes required. Joint or position. Joint design used. We're going to do a butt joint. We're going to do a single weld. We're going to make it easy on them and put backing in there. Backing material is going to be the same as the rest of it, A36, with a roof opening of a quarter of an inch. Root face dimension. We're, we're going to keep it a point, so I'm just going to put on not applicable. Groove angle. We'll go 30 degrees. Radius. Not applicable. We're not going to back gouge, so there is no method. It's in a 3G position. That way, it'll qualify you. And we're going to do this according to again the. AWS D1.1 Structural Steel Welding Code, that's kind of what we use. Um, the position is 3G, so it's going to give you, it's going to pre-qualify you for numerous positions. Um, it'll qualify you for 1G, 2G, and also 1F, 2F, and 3F in the fillet weld world. But we don't have to do that. This is going to actually ask you to draw the joint, so you go to Edit, Weld Draw, we'll go to the joint first. With backing, um, thickness 0.5, root opening, that's 0.25, that's our quarter of an inch. Root face, it's going to be zero. Groove angle 60, okay. There it is. Stretch it out here. One thing I always do is uh, see how it comes out in blue and if you don't have a color printer, you need to change that to black. Otherwise, it won't um, be able to be printed and be able to be seen. Okay. And if you don't notice it, you'll hand it to your your customer, and they'll say hey what's the dimensions on this so we'll go back to weld draw we're going to do a welding symbol now again you see this orange get rid of that right now it looks good so we're going to hit ok stretch it out so you can actually see it there's your little I guess this little print hit X trans it asks you to transfer it back transfer yes so there's your joint And here we're going to go into uh, transfer modes for MIG, which we're not doing MIG, so it doesn't matter. Now it's asking you for your uh, polarity. Typically you're going to do direct current electrode positive with stick. There is no other. Tungsten. We're not using tungsten, so we're going to get rid of that. We're not doing TIG. Preheat minimum temperature I used to put down ambient so that'd be like 70 degrees and I sent it to a couple customers and they said I don't want ambient I want an exact degree so I always put in 70 degrees Fahrenheit inner pass temperature again 70 degrees Fahrenheit and a max of 250 degrees Fahrenheit because you are and the inner pass does matter because you're going to be doing multiple passes on this. You're not going to be able to fill that joint up with one pass. Stringer or weave bead, I always put down both. I like to leave that up to the welder. Multi pass per side, it's definitely going to be a multi pass. Number of electrodes. We're using one. Contact tip to work distance doesn't matter because there's no contact tip. 
electrode spacing that's for um, like sub arc if there was a number of wires coming in interpass cleaning wire wheel slash grind oops this is more preheat stuff it's over our thickness so we don't care we're just going to NA out of there welding procedure pass one process SMAW Seventy eighteen is your filler metal class. Filler metal diameter, let's just go with one eighth of an inch. Current type again, direct current electrode positive. Amps or wire feed speed. On uh, WPS, you need to do a range because not everybody's going to have the same kind of machine. Uh, the welders, some people like to run it hot, some people like to weld it a little bit cold. As long as it's not dangerous um, and it's within the range that you give, it's good to go with 8th uh, inch 7018. I would say anywhere from 100 amps to 130 would be acceptable, but um, 130 is pretty hot for going up. Volts, because this isn't MIG, we're going to go NA. Travel speed. The way you, you calculate this is you get a stopwatch and you lay down um, a practice bead and then time it and then figure out how many inches per minute you're actually doing. With uh, this it's probably going to be around, I don't know, 8 inches per minute. So I'm going to give them a range again like I said. And because it's vertical up they might travel really fast doing a stringer and do multiple stringers. So I'd probably say somewhere around... Um, five to eleven inches per minute that's going to ask you for other so if there's some other thing you want to put in here you can but we're not going to so that's NA so that's a WPS and when you print this out it's not in this little square box but you have to save it in order to put it into like a PDF so I'm going to save it as um, WPS ID number. Normally I put the company down. Um, if they were doing aluminum, steel, or stainless, I'd put that maybe, or you know the process, depending on however you like to save stuff. Uh, WPS for this is just we're going to say sample because we're just doing a sample one. You hit OK, and then uh, I'll. I'll save it as a PDF and we'll look at it that way. Okay, this is uh the Okay, this is the PDF and you can see all that stuff we just wrote. It's all on there. It's usually about 2 pages for a WPS and you can see all the stuff we typed in. It's there. To the end. Then it has a separate sheet for the actual little drawing we did. And if you were going to become a certified welder, this is what they would hand you. And say, okay, perform this. And um, if you pass Ben test and things like that, you become a certified welder.